Good morning, everyone. We want to welcome you to our 10 Strike Community Church Touchpoint and Teaching. That's what we call it. And uh, we're so glad that you can join with us. And uh, you know, some are watching live, a few of you anyway, and most of you, I think, watch later. But anyway, it's just good to have you with us. Joyce is actually working on some things with decor this morning, and um, we, Pastor Dean is here. He'll be sharing a little bit later some blessed life uh, material, and uh, we have a special guest with us this morning. My youngest brother, Timothy Dale Pomp, is going to be sharing about covenants. But um, he said driving up, he said it was only like two or three below zero. <laughs> Is that what it was? Heat waves. So we got a heat wave. <laughs> I saw last night that Texas, they're having some real issues there with different things going on. I don't know how cold it is, but I know they didn't have church like at the Eagle Mountain Church. We was... got some relatives outside of Dallas that I think are listening. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they'll have to text in and tell, tell us what's going on. <laughs> But they didn't have church, but I know it wasn't as cold as it was here. I think we had like 40 below windchill, but we decided... Slippery you know, and slimy. And we had a group that was here with us, but then also, of course, we do the live stream each week. And uh, so we we like to do that. So <coughs> thankful for Doug and the crew there in our sound booth on Sunday mornings. Uh, that allow us to have the live stream. If you ever get a chance, you could send a comment of thanks to it's Doug Cooley and then the others that uh, trade off turns there. I know Pastor Dean kind of oversees that area too. So anyway, we're just thankful for that. But we're thankful we're coming out of the deep freeze. It looks to me like each day it gets a little bit warmer. And so, I think I'm going to turn it over right now to Tim. He's got a lot of good teaching here for us from the Word of God on, on Covenant. And so, Tim, I'm going to we'll switch over our camera over to you here. And you can adjust that. For, thank you, Lord, your blessing on that teaching here. Howdy, howdy. Uh, greetings from my wife, uh, she has got stuff that she's doing today also, and so she will not be with, with us here. Um, if you got your Bibles, uh, turn to Luke chapter 7, and I'm just going to read one passage of Scripture that we're going to be based on, and we're going to be talking about the woman uh, with the alabaster box. And I, the name of my simple message is Seven Covenant Doorways that are found from the woman with the alabaster box. Um, so let me just say something really quickly. Um, we are in a season uh, that is so exciting that I can hardly stand it. Um, we have to do everything that we can to prepare ourselves because the harvest is ripe Amen. and we have to it's um, I, I don't even know how to explain it um, if you happen to be in the Park Rapids area we are doing a worship 90 minute worship uh, revival type of a meeting in Nevis Church of Christ um, Friday night this Friday night my dad's birthday Friday, uh, February 19th and I'm very excited about that uh, we got a whole team, and I'm going to pack out that little Church of Christ, and it's going to be fun. Um, so let's jump into this woman who came off the street, and the Bible says specifically this lady was a sinner. One of my greatest uh, uh, crutch, uh, sins or whatever in my life, I believe, is just a religious spirit in that I've grown up in the church and I've grown up knowing the, the truth and my I, sometimes I get lazy in my own spiritual ways 
And when I see the covenant, and I literally, we found, I found seven covenants that I'm going to walk through really quickly that is in this story. And I want to share them with you. And I want to relate it to us going forward and um, giving uh, us a platform to go into this time when, when we use our covenant and our relationship with Jesus to change our world. I guess one of the main things is she was afraid, she was ashamed, she was a reproach, she was pathetic to the world, she was way pathetic to the religious people, and she was even pathetic to the disciples, I feel like, and you'll see it here. But let's read the scripture, seven, chapter, chapter 7 of Luke 36 to 50, I'm going to read. Then one of the Pharisees asked him, Jesus, to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down and ate. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table and the Pharisee's house, she got in somehow. She brought an alabaster flask, uh, whatever you want to call it. A, it's been described many ways, but a, a, a container. Of fragrant oil and stood at the feet of Jesus weeping please just walk into this this story with me and she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair and and his head and she kissed his feet and anointed them with this fragrant oil now when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this he spoke, he spoke to himself saying, this man, if he really were a prophet, he would know who and what manner this woman is and who is touching him for she is a sinner. And so instead of talking about the oil, the, the alabaster box, the oil, today I'm going to talk about this woman and I believe like seven different covenants, and I have seven scriptures, and I'm just going to be very uh, to the point, and it's just powerful. Um, Jesus or the Pharisees did not invite this lady. She came with, number one, boldness. Number two, vulner vulnerability to ridicule and vulnerability to shame because she was a sinner. She was a prostitute. And as a religious person all my life, knowing, knowing the truth, I mean, I hardly ever swore before. I went in a closet one time to, to see what it sounded like to swear, you know, <laughs> when I was in fifth grade. <laughs> um, and I'm joking, and yet uh, I, it's just I've been shielded and so to, for me or anyone to, to go into Psalm 51 and, and, and relate with David and his cry of repentance, it's Ash Wednesday, by the way, today, uh, to anyone who, who cares. And, but um, so I want to keep moving along and I want to turn right to Hebrews 10, 19 and 20. The first covenant is covenant access, covenant access. And now... We are brothers and sisters. Um, I am addicted lately to the Passion tra Translation, and uh, so you're going to get a full dose of that this morning. And now, brothers and sisters, in God's family, because of the blood of Jesus, he welcomes us. Think of the story now. Think of the story. He welcomes us to come into his most holy presence, even though we're sinners, in this heavenly realm boldly and without hesitation for he has dedicated a new and living way for us to approach God for just as the veil was torn in two Jesus body was torn open to give us free access to him hallelujah Amen. so yes. covenant number one I can approach him boldly I have no idea. 
uh, how this lady even slipped in the door. I, I, I can't picture the setting necessarily, um, but it's incredible what this woman, this woman did. Uh, the lady uh, that was caught in adultery, she was thrown in the street and then the, the drama took place with the Pharisees and Jesus. But this woman had to fight through her shame and she literally got access. And, the, and when you say the word covenant, of course, we're, we're talking about our broken, but what Jesus did, it says right here, by the blood of Jesus, and he welcomes us Amen. to come into his Amen. most Lord. holy sanctuary through his blood. <laughs> I'm just going to keep moving on here. Number two, this woman had probably never entered a man's home unless invited for illicit reasons. This time she came to give something vulnerable and something happened. Number two, number two, covenant redemption. Ephesians 1.7, one of my favorite scriptures, Steve and, and, and Dean. I'm going to read this a couple times. The Passion Translation. Since we are now joined to Christ, we have been given the treasures of redemption by his blood. There's the blood again. Um, there's a kind of a side uh, title to this message also, and it's riches. All the way mingled through this, these covenants, you're going to find uh, when you access into his presence, what do you get? All the riches of his goodness, his blood, his, his truth, his, his willingness to receive us no matter who we are. It's incredible. So to finish this verse, we have joined Christ. We have been given treasures of redemption by his blood, the total cancellation of our sins. Think of this lady now. Think of this lady. All because of his cascading riches of his grace. <laughs> Number two, covenant redemption. redemption. So this woman walks in there and, and, and the looks... If looks could kill the, both the Pharisees, and if you read later, and the disciples, they were not happy about her presence in this room. Number one, access. Number two, redemption. Number three, a prostitute, again, is not a guest. Apparently, she had heard testimony over and over. Notice the people who get healed imagine the people that ran to Jesus and touched the hem of his garment and said just say something and and the faith what is faith faith is in this covenant faith is going on in each one in, inside inside each one of us and uh, so this woman had heard what was her sickness what was her disease sin and she wasn't just sinful, she was the scum of the earth. But she had, had uh, heard that Jesus and her plan was through insight and understanding to go uninvited and give everything that she had for a hopeless, um, because she was hopeless and to get a response from the Messiah. Number three, covenant insight and, I, and again the scripture I have just explains the riches of understanding and wisdom you know this one I, we could quote this one Ephesians 1 27 uh, 17 to 23 covenant insight I pray that the father glory of our uh, glorious God and our Lord Jesus Christ would impart to this woman at this moment to you out there whatever you're going through whatever trauma whatever situation whatever COVID whatever trial whatever fear whatever shame 
would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation by the acknowledging of Jesus, deepening intimacy with him. I pray that the light of God will illuminate you and the eyes of your imagination flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling that is wealth. There it is. It's again, riches of God's glorious inheritance that he finds in us his holy ones. I, of course, the, the whole point of the story is that this woman was worthless. She was not acceptable. But she grabbed a hold of these covenants. Hallelujah. Access, <clears throat> redemption, covenant insight. And so every single morning we pray this, uh, that the God of our Lord, the Father, would give unto me the riches of his wisdom and understanding by the acknowledging of Jesus that the eyes of our understanding would be open. Why, of, for what? That I can just know that I can go t towards him and anytime, no matter what. Number four, covenant response. How was she responding? She was weeping, crying, repenting. And so we jump into the Psalm of David 51 after he committed uh, sin with Bathsheba. Again, look through the eyes of this woman. Uh, Psalm 51, 6 to 10. I know that you delight to set your truth deep in my spirit. Think of this woman now. So come into the hidden places of my heart, Lord, and teach me wisdom. Purify my conscience. Listen to this. Make this leper clean. <laughs> Again, wash me in your love until I am pure in heart. Satisfy me in your sweetness and my song. lost my place. The beauty of computers, right? Wash me in your love until I am pure in heart. Satisfy me in your sweetness and my song of joy will return. I, I don't imagine this lady ever had a song of joy, but it, it, it came that day, didn't it? Amen. The place within me you have crushed will rejoice in your healing touch. Man, the, the passion does something, does amazing things. Hide my sin from your face. Erase all my guilt by your saving grace. Come on, say it with me. You, we'll say it in New King James. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit from me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy. Uh, of course, they didn't have salvation necessarily that day. It was coming. So covenant response. How do we respond when we get in his presence? Can I tell you the honest truth? Many times my mind is going a thousand miles. I'm usually leading worship and my mind is, what am I gonna do next and how? Uh, and so many times, anyway, I have my own set of sins, and my own set of problems, <laughs> but God cares about how we respond. Amen. It's amazing. Number five. So here she comes with a gift. The whole theme here seems to be riches, riches of wisdom, riches of access, riches of redemption, riches of, of grace that we'll see in a little bit. But this lady's very presence brought out a heartfelt thought of his disciples and the Pharisees. As she exposed her worship, as she began to worship, when the flask was broken, the fragrance of worship filled the air and motivations were exposed all around the room. Worship. Yes. In Mark 14, 
uh, the translation says this about probably Judas's response, but it was, maybe it was Peter. It says, this is a damnable waste. Breaking this, uh, uh, this precious oil, this is speculation, but was probably bought in, in the previous days. She probably took out of her entire life savings and went and bought is what today is said to be twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 worth of fragrant oil. And she, of course, she had no idea she was going to anoint Jesus and be talked about for thousands of years. And she was anointing him for burial. And Jesus said that later, of course. Um, he, he stirred up every emotion. Unbelievable emotion. So this is called covenant sacrifice. God will bring us all to a place. I got about five minutes here, so I'm just going to keep moving on. And then if you guys want to comment, um, the, here's the scripture, Matthew 16, 25, 24 and 25. Jesus said to his disciples, if you truly want to follow me, you should at once completely reject and disown your life. And you must be willing to share my cross and experience and surrender everything to my ways. For you choose self-sacrifices and lose your lives for my glory, you will continually discover true life. If you choose to keep your life, you will forfeit what you try to keep. Oh. Amen. Uh, of course, each one of these covenants are a sermon in themselves, but wow. It probably cost the lady her whole life savings, more than likely. Uh, she came, she, she anticipated total exposure, a vile, filthy reject from society, supernaturally realized that her covenant right was to approach, to worship, and to give everything she had. Wow. Thank you, Lord. I love the next one, number six, covenant timing. Uh, Romans 13 11 to like this is all the more urgent for the time is running out for you to know the hour of in human history can I can anybody say that right now in human history is an amazing time it's time for us to wake up for the salvation is nearer than when we first believed I, I we could spend a half hour on timing even if you've wasted time, God will redeem your time. And, but Jesus said it well. She, he said, you have no idea what you've done. Every, all these other people, they're, they're mocking and trying to get flattery from me. You have literally prepared my body for burial. And you will never stop being talked about because of you have you have you have cut a covenant with me that is so incredible, incredible, incredible. For history, your name will go down because of your sacrifice. And number seven, covenant favor, grace, Ephesians two seven. Throughout the coming ages, we will be visibly. We will visibly display of the infinite, limitless riches of his grace. There's that word again, riches of his grace, which was shown to us in Christ Jesus. Well, of course, grace is one of my favorite. Uh, incredible. Covenant access, covenant redemption, covenant insight, covenant response, covenant sacrifice, covenant timing and covenant favor. I got just a, can I take two minutes and I want to read this story and then you guys can jump in however you want to pray for people or whatever. This is called Acres of Diamonds. A true story of a Persian farmer named Ali Hafed 
in the 1800s, I believe. He was a wealthy man. He was wealthy not in money and possessions, but with a modest life, family, food, and community. One day, Alfie heard the tale of an exciting stories of African settlers who had made millions by discovering diamonds, diamond mines. Now, after he had heard all of these about these diamond stories and how much they were worth, he became discontented with his covenant family. Realizing the African continent was rich in diamonds, I, this, this statement is the worst part of the story. He left his family and went to search for diamonds. Ali Hafed spent the rest of his life wandering around Africa and Europe, searching for diamonds. Finally, finally he drowned himself in a tidal wave in Barcelona. Just walked out in the, in the ocean and, and died. Meanwhile, the man who had purchased his field one day <laughs> took his camel by the garden and found some water in the shallow waters by a brook and found a large black rock stone in the stream and he found in this property. It turned out that this was one of the greatest, largest diamonds ever found and that this property that Ali Hafed went, <laughs> left his family, became one of the richest diamond mines ever found. Mm -hmm. And what a message that this woman, she was not enough. She was not enough. She didn't have enough. And if there's anybody out there and this is, we're in a season in time is that God can't, it's, it's not time for you to have a pity party. It's not time for you to, to, it is time for you to grab a hold of his covenant access, his covenant redemption, his covenant insight, his covenant, um, and you give your covenant sacrifice and then you will receive his covenant grace and you will not be, you won't worry about what's been given you. God has given you everything you need. Don't be discontent. Don't get discontented, but but grab a hold of what God has given you. It's Amen. just this, that's such an incredible story. He, uh, I, I just feel so bad for his family. He le it says he left his family. Bye. I'm, I'll come back with the money and the diamonds later. Went right in his own field. Oh, it's just powerful. So, Amen. I can never. <clears throat> Look in every place but his own backyard where he was there. It's incredible. Yeah. I'm going to, once you get ready in just a moment here to pray okay. for the people, Tim, I'm going to read something out of my mom's journal. I've been reading my mom's last journal. This was from January 12 last year, oh. Sunday. And it says, reading through Genesis again as the year begins. This morning I read about the covenant God made with Abraham. Quite a ceremony. Three animals and two birds. The animals were split in two. The birds were left whole. The one who wa walked through the cut apart animals was the one responsible to keep the covenant and make it come to pass. And we know a lot of the Old Testament, it, it focuses on blood, the blood of animals, you know, and we know it all pointed to Jesus. And what Tim was talking about, the blood covenant, and it's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Wow. Um, <clears throat> the one who walked through it in that bloody mess, you know, between the two parts of the animal uh, was the one that was responsible to keep the covenant and make it come to pass. In this one, it was God himself who walked through the blood. It set the pattern for the covenant which we now observe, the new covenant. Yes. The blood of Jesus, he paid 
the full price for the world. That's for you and for me and for your loved ones and for others you are praying for. Hallelujah, Mom says. Our part is to believe and receive. He did it for me. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the grace to believe and receive. And I pray for many today, may they receive your marvelous gift. And now I'm going to ask Tim if you would do that for these folks, whatever the need for that covenant blessing is, um, that will just be imparted to them. Amen. Uh, as I begin to pray, I just want to tell you that on my heart has been Red Lake Reservation and Leech Lake Reservation and White Earth and Cass Lake and and just I want you to tell you that when we grab our covenant, all of a sudden stuff is going to start exploding and we're going to be able to go out. If you live around the country in Texas or Michigan, God has given you right now access to give you revelation and insight in the name of Jesus. What is the purpose? That all might come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. It's not about me. It's not about a person. It's about his covenant with us. And each one of us has something special to give. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my friends out there. I pray, first of all, if they have shame and fear. I pray that, that it would be broken. The, the woman didn't care. She had shame and she had fear and she came into God's presence and God set her free. And she kept on going with all these covenants, access and redemption and sacrifice and, and, and God responded. Jesus responded to her and said, well, how about me just talk about you for, the, for, for thousands of years? People will be talking about your gift. And by the way, thank you for, for, for pouring onto my body, getting me ready for burial. Oh God, let us do that in our worship. God, I pray in Jesus' name there would be breakthrough in my friends in every part of their life, in Jesus' precious name, so that they would not be fear and shame and burdens would not be on them. They would be broken. That stuff would break off of them so that they can go and do the great commission in this earth. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Just tell them they can get the announcements on Facebook, our Facebook page. Morning. <clears throat> so, uh, Pastor Steve just wanted to remind everybody that you can get our announcements on our Facebook page or check your email if you are on our email list. And uh, I just want to uh, make a statement about God's heart is concerning finances. In Luke 16.10, he was faithful in a very little thing, is also is faithful also in much. And then in verse 11, uh, if you have not been faithful in use of unrighteous wealth, who will entrust you true, true riches to you? And so I just want to see for a moment this morning that God watches our financial, uh, how, we, how we treat our finances, our attitude toward finances. And it's not only that he rewards financially, but he's watching. And our faithfulness will set us up for his promotion. And it's an amazing thing that God uh, watches our life that closely. Barnabas, the first time we hear about Barnabas was that he, he had a tract of land and he sold it and brought it into the apostles to help those in need. And then the next thing we find is that he is the one that is taking Saul 
who became Paul, but also the people of Jerusalem couldn't receive Paul because he had been a, a you know working against the church and persecuting the church. But he came to brought him to the apostles and affirmed him and said that he had a real experience with God. And so then later on Barnabas travels a little bit and he Saul had been sent off to Antioch and he says I'm going to go and find Saul and he hadn't had contact for quite a while so he goes and finds him he stays with him and, and it's an amazing thing that after a while the Holy Spirit set, sends them out as an apostolic team and so he, he started out just being a, a, a lover of God. And it's interesting what God says about his character. He was a good man and full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And he brought many people to the Lord. But he winds up being a co-apostle with Paul. And it just started with his faithfulness, with his finances. And God, God saw that and he promoted him. And this took time. You know, we don't just, didn't happen overnight. But yet we see that God works it out in our life as we are just standing faithful, as we're, you know, that's just part of the, part of what God is looking at is our finances. But that's one of them. And as we're faithful, 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 it, it can open the door for promotion for us spiritually. And hallelujah, the Lord loves us. He has a marvelous plan for our life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, so you know what you're going to be preaching on Sunday? Well, I'm looking at uh, um, being established, being grounded. Settled. Settled, yeah. Settled. Yeah, amen. That's good. So, amen. Blooming where you're planted and growing. Yeah. Not like Ollie was there <laughs> going all over the place when it was right there in his own backyard. Oh, that's an incredible story. True story. So, Pastor Dean is going to have the message Sunday. Abby's going to be leading worship, and we will <laughs> we'll see you then. Hallelujah. Stay warm. Goodbye.